I, I was in Vienna, Austria when Hitler marched in and I actually saw Hitler alive. And my family was virtually destroyed. Everything they had was taken and it was not an easy life. Okay. So you actually saw Hitler in person? I saw Hitler in person in his Mercedes Benz in the front seat with his left wound left hand on the windshield and his right hand raised high and the people were crying for joy. Well, my father was, was in, in a concentration camp called Janowska and evidently he met his end, his end in the same old long torturous way they killed Jews. And my mother was in a Gestapo prison camp for four months and finally was liberated and went to England and I went to an orphanage in Belgium. During that time, well, it wasn't easy because I had to try and avoid the Gestapo on the street. Gestapo is a secret German police and I knew city like the palm of my hand and I knew where to hide and beat them out of catching me and then I wound up in an orphanage in Brussels, Belgium which was not very nice and from there I went to Houston and the most beautiful I think I had was seeing the Statue of Liberty at seven o'clock in the morning with the sun behind it because I knew I was liberated. And then I went to fight for the United States and the Philippines in the army. And the Japanese were no better than the Germans because what they did to the Filipino people was horrible. Um, the young people that were in the audience today, what was your message to them? You talked about not having this happen again in the future. I tried to explain to them and show them what can happen, how people can hate people and kill them. And the torture, you, you, you can't describe the torture and make people understand just exactly what torture is. Like for example, in your bare hands scrubbing, this, scrubbing oil paint off the sidewalks and come home with bloody hands. That's just an example. And my mother was caught by the Gestapo and was put in prison for four months. And I hardly recognized her when she came back. And my father disappeared in the prison he tried to escape, but couldn't. He was in Poland. And he was a veteran of World War I. He fought the Russians in World War I and the Italians in World War I. So, and I loved him dearly. He was a wonderful, wonderful person. And when he said goodbye to me the last time, he said, do me a favor. Remember that somewhere in this world there is a man who is your father who loves you very, very much. And to this day, this phrase sticks up here. With the state of the country right now, do you think something like that or similar to that could still happen? Or do you think humanity... I fought, I fought for this country and I'm proud that I fought for my country. But what is happening in the United States today is very, very alarming to me, and I don't like it. Well, I went in the Army at, uh, I was 20 years old, uh, after the Japs bombed Pearl Harbor, like millions of others. And uh, I fought in the, uh, I joined the 42nd Division. Um, I went overseas with the 42nd Division. We fought in northern France, and uh, the Battle of the Bulge, we were transferred to the 3rd Army, Patton's Army, and fought to relieve the uh, people at Bastogne, the 101st. We got out of there about Christmas Day, the day after Christmas. 
and went on to fight uh, throughout uh, northern France <coughs> and uh, southern Germany and Austria and uh, ended the war uh, in Munich, Germany, right after the prison camp in Dachau. Uh, unimaginable. Um, our first impression as we rolled in, it was kind of like a madhouse. The prisoners were raving and hollering and cheering. And we finally got in through the electric fence and uh, they wanted to hug us, you know, but we were afraid of uh, communicable, communicable diseases and uh, we didn't want to hug them. It, uh, it was bedlam and the stench was terrible. And, uh, there was a stench of dead and defecation. And that's probably the most memorable thing there. Um, we stayed there overnight and we couldn't believe the more we'd see, the more we could was disbelief of how one human could treat another human like that. Uh, like I told the students, they not only worked them to death, but they starved them to death and it was systematic. They went from tier to tier to tier. And how a per people could do that to another human being is just unimaginable. I mean, calculated over a long period of time, not an instant, to get killed is get killed. But uh, for a calculated length of time that the Germans did that to both the Polish, the Jews, and the Russian that they had in that prison camp is unbelievable. We got in there in the morning and the different prisoners were bringing us some of the guards and some of the uh, inmates to kill. And we shot them. And as we went along the day, uh, things kind of calmed down and we were able to look at some of the barracks and uh, it was like mail chutes. They were in lengthwise and thousands and thousands and thousands of them. But uh, going to the ovens, the, the big chimney, we were attracted by a, a brick building and it had a, a driveway down into the basement. And the first thing we saw was a big pile of bodies, maybe a hundred stripped bodies just piled. And they were small because they were dehydrated, piled they stacked good. They were waiting for the oven. Then I went on to look at the oven, open the doors of them. I have photographs of all this and quite a historical uh, background on it. But uh, I saw the different tools they used to rake the bones up and, you know, to clean the shovels, to clean out the ashes. And this, all these procedures were done as routine. And one human being doing that to another. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. Well, burning them, cremation is a, a form, but uh, to uh, actually uh, systematically starve and work these people until they were too weak to work and then commit them to a barracks where they would let them die without food is a prolonged, maybe a six uh, a year, a whole year process. So what were you trying to convey to the kids today? Well, the, the things that I alarm me, uh, in my visits to France and Europe and Germany in the most recent years, there seems to be a, another child of anti-Semitism uh, advancing. I only know what it, they, I've been told or what I've read or heard, but uh, it seems to be that people are hating Jews more. Why, I don't know. Uh, and it's gone on through mankind, as far as I'm concerned, through biblical times, anyhow. And I don't understand it. I'm a German and Irish, and we, my dad worked for Jewish people. We knew Jewish people. We had nothing against them or anything to say bad about them. So I, I just don't understand that part of it.